Nissan Skyline R34 GTR represents more to an entire generation than any car in recent memory. It's an elusive vehicle to most of us living here in North America, and its role in pop culture has made it one of the most iconic cars ever to come out of Japan. Not surprising to anyone, it changed everything. The first time I ever heard about the Nissan Skyline was from Gran Turismo 2, back on the PS1. And ever since then, Fast and the Furious came out and all these things. Then you get online and you see pictures of this car everywhere and you're like, why don't I see this anywhere on the road? But it's here and now. Watching those movies and everything just kind of ingrains in your mind that this is the, let's be honest, this is the king of all Japanese tuner cars. The sounds of this car are just unreal. Hi, my name is Jamie. Uh, this is my 99 R34 GTR here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, so I found the car about a year ago uh, in Japan. Uh, it was for a domestic sale. Uh, I had to have somebody export it for me uh, from Japan. Um, the whole process took about three months to, to get it here. When I first got the car, it had a slightly bigger exhaust than stock. Uh, it had 2530 twin turbos still on it, but other than that, it was, it was pretty stock. Uh, I essentially just wanted to drive around and just keep it how it was. Uh, then unfortunately, after three months owning it, I, I blew it up. So uh, we had to pull the engine, and then that's kind of when the plan was, hey, if the engine's coming out, let's, uh, let's build this thing. Currently the car is making 700 horsepower to the wheels, um, running the Borg Warner 64mm turbo. Basically we built the whole engine from scratch. Uh, I mean there's so much stuff done to this thing now, it's just, I mean we could talk for hours about it. Some of the favourite mods for me are obviously the interior uh, that we're seeing overseas to get made carbon fibre. Uh, and then the new, the new exhaust, I've got the, uh, the Muse 3.5 inch exhaust which now it's basically 3.5 inches back from the turbo all the way. So these cars basically just came legal um, within the last two years and Jamie picked one up not too long ago because he already had one, um, if I remember correctly, about nine or ten years ago back in New Zealand. And he fell in love with the car and now he's got one here in Canada which gets a lot more attention I would imagine than back in New Zealand. The car gets a lot of attention here. Um, obviously there's not a lot in Canada and even less in the States. So. Uh, I live pretty close to the border, so it's over, over in the US a little bit, but uh, yeah, we pull up to these car meets, so we're just driving down the street and, and uh, you know, I'm getting guys tooting at me all left and right, you know, hey, awesome car, you know, on their bikes and stuff, so yeah, it gets a lot of attention and, you know, you know it's, that's awesome, you know, that's kind of why I like the car as well, is, you know, it's, it's rare, you know, it's, it's very rare here, so uh, yeah, I don't mind talking to someone about the car if they want to have a chat. Driving the car is kind of funny, like it doesn't really throw you back in the seat like some of these other smaller cars do. The power is more linear and, and, and then driving it, um, you don't really get a full idea of how fast you're going until you look at the speedo. You know, and this thing, I mean, it gets up there really, really fast. Uh, driving around the streets, I uh, don't really notice a difference in power much from when I had it stock. Um, but like I said, when we see the speedo, that's, that's when we really notice it. Steering is well, a lot tighter than a lot of other performance cars I've driven. It feels really dialed in. But other than that, the clutch is easy. It's, uh, it's a little bit grabby, but it feels pretty much like stock. Um, Jamie has also changed out the stock Speedo because in Japan they only went up to 180K. And uh, now this one's a little bit different. It goes all the way up to 320, which is a lot more useful. I've been pretty lucky, you know, I, I've been kind of crazy in this a few times. I've been pulled over three times, but, but every, every time the officer who's pulled me over has loved the car and, and, and let me off, so uh, that's definitely a benefit. So earlier 
earlier today we went up to Seymour Mountain. Uh, we were there probably uh, 15 minutes and we got kicked off the mountain. And then we ended up going to Cypress Mountain. We didn't even get up the mountain and we were kicked off. Um, we got pulled over by the police. Very lucky he did not have a radar on him. Uh, I was going very quick. I just yeah. gave him the lecture okay. and I'm going to give you the same lecture. Like, sure. don't fucking do this shit up here. Like, I guess it looks cool and I don't know what happens afterwards. Take it as an unbelievably lucky break okay. today. Okay. So. Nice. Got us doing warning from him and, uh, and kind of sat there with my sad face on and, and, uh, and got off. So thank you, officer. Just to be behind the wheel driving this car is really something else. You look out the rear view mirror and that massive, iconic R34 wing sitting behind you. And you know that you're just sitting in a time capsule, a piece of history. No questions asked, this car is gonna skyrocket in value. I think the best words to describe the car for someone who's never been in it or in a car with similar power would probably be scary. Like it's just brutal. I think I've pretty much loved this car since I was, uh, you know, I'm an old guy now, you know, but back in the day, back home in New Zealand, uh, there was a guy with deep pockets and uh, he picked one of these up back when I was starting off in like little Evos and WRXs and stuff and I've loved the car ever since, you know, even before the Fast and the Furious movies came out. Around the world, this car was always famous. Um, I think when the Fast and the Furious movies came out, it just became more popular, more mainstream in, in North America. Uh, I don't know how often people saw this, other than say maybe Gran Turismo, the, the games, but they were always popular in Europe and in Australasia. Uh, the R35s, I actually like the R35s. Um, I'm kind of torn if I'd own one or not. You know, I like them. I mean, they're so easy to work on and get great power out of them, and, and they're, you know, they're pretty reliable. The only downside to them is they're, you know, they're mass produced, so it's like, you know, I see three or four of these in, in the province and then you see a hundred of the R35s. So the R34 has always been my favorite. Uh, I've had an R32 before. I uh, had a friend uh, test drive back when we were a lot younger when the R33 was brand new. We went out in that and that was actually when I fell in love with these cars. Just, uh, it was just crazy. But uh, in terms of what they look like, the 34 body shape's always been my favorite. I just love it. I think in terms of future plans with the car, I'm pretty done right now. Like I'm really happy with 700 wheel horsepower on this thing here. Um, there's still potential to maybe get another sort of 80 to 100 out of it. Um, limiting factors, uh, we're pretty much maxed out now on the injectors and fuel pump. Um, but we can, we can fix that. But like I said, it's, it's fast enough for me right now. Um, it was never really designed to be a straight line drag car. I kind of wanted this car to be a, you know, a track car. I can take it to track. I can still take it and do drags uh, and then show. Um, and it perfect, I mean, it drives, there's, there's no lag in it, so I mean, it's, I can drive, drive this thing daily. You know, I never even turn the radio on on this car. I just listen, listen to the exhaust all day, that's it. Like, I've never turned it on. Like, it's, it's just amazing. So, uh, uh, you know, it puts a smile on my face every time I drive it, and uh, everyone who comes in it, I mean, the same thing here. They, everyone who comes in this car says it's the awesomest car they've ever been in. Well, there we are, folks, the R34 GTR. Honestly, I never thought I'd be able to drive this car. I never thought I'd see myself in an R34 GTR, but if you ever have a chance to see one of these cars in person, especially when they become legal in the States, do that. Because just like the Lamborghini Countach was the poster car of 40 years past, this is ours.